This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Hi there, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my Online Guitar Academy. So delighted to have you joining me. In this quick answer episode, I'm going to talk about tablature diagrams, what they are and how we read them or we see them. Usually tablature diagrams are as sort of an aid that show us how to play a particular chord on the guitar or a note on the guitar and they're just a diagram that show us a little bit of the neck and where to put our fingers. So go ahead and take a look here at the board. I have sort of one drawn out. So the tablature diagram as you can see over on the right down below those are tablature diagrams. This one's showing how to play a particular chord. This is showing how to play a C7 chord to be exact. This one's showing how to play an A note. So sometimes we'll see them, especially like in a note reading book. How do you play this particular note on the guitar? We might see a tablature diagram. In a chords book, uh, we might see how do we play a particular chord. Lots of chords, that's where we see it the most. Chord tablature diagrams, we might call them. Tablature just meaning that it's showing us uh, a snippet of the neck and how to play something on it. So the way the guitar lines up to these is just like so. So the headstock at the top, so it's, it lines up just like if I'm holding my guitar straight up in the air with fret one, two, three, and four being the spaces. Fret one, two, three, and four. It can go higher, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. However big the tablature diagram is, it can have more frets shown. And then the vertical lines, so the horizontal lines mark those frets. The vertical lines mark the strings and it moves smallest string, highest string over here on the right to the lowest string, uh, biggest, fattest string over here on the left. And strings one, two, three, four, five, six. So the right line, one, two, three, four, five, and six, just like so. Then what happens with the tablature diagram is if we're going to have to put our fingers somewhere on the, the fretboard, we're going to see dots drawn that show us where to do that. So you can see that up here with the chord, you see that with the note. Up above the ta tablature diagram will have numbers, or it might have numbers. Sometimes you don't get this at all, but we usually have numbers. And then um, sometimes we'll also have an X telling us not to play that string. So just looking at the key here before we take a look at reading that tablature diagram. X means don't play that string. O means play that string open or without any fingers on it, like I just played the low sixth string. And then any numbers, or you might even see a T. Sometimes people will play chords with their thumb, meaning reaching over over the neck like so. T could equal thumb if that's actually there. It's kind of uncommon. But index is one, so index. Middle is two. Ring is three, and pinky is four. So that's how that works. So if we see a number one written up above, it's suggesting that we use our index finger to play that particular note, that particular spot on the neck. So uh, we'll look at the note one first because it's just got one on it. So we're sitting up here on the third line to, uh, as we move left. So one, two, three, meaning string number three. And then we're sitting at fret number two, and it says to use our middle finger to play that one. And so that's an A note, so that would be demonstrating how to play an A note uh, in a particular book for that exact that exact one. Now, um, just with these, it's pretty common to see index in the first fret, middle in the second, ring in the third, pinky in the fourth. That's pretty consistent, though we will see that change with the chords because sometimes we're fingering notes that are in the same fret, just on a different string. So take a look at the one with the chords now. Now when you're doing chords, it can be a little overwhelming to see all of those things at once. It can help to say, okay, where does my index finger go? Put my index finger where it goes. Then where does my middle finger go? Where's my ring finger go? Where's my pinky finger go? Sometimes you won't use the index at all. So it might be, oh, no index, but where's my middle finger go? Okay, middle goes here, ring goes here, and so forth. Sometimes you won't use the pinky or so on. So you don't always use all four fingers. But once you get the fingers down that you are using for that particular chord, you can ask yourself, okay, what strings do I play open and what strings do I not play at all? So we'll go through that process here for the C7 chord. I chose this one as an example because it does use all four fingers and an open string and it has one string that we don't play at all. So I'd ask myself, where's my index finger go? I find finger one. And I will say these are suggested fingerings. 
with some chords there's more than one great way to finger it and so if you have a different way and you're seeing a diagram and you want to finger it different that is okay but if you look first for where's my index finger go well on this particular case it's on the second string because I'm counting strings one two from right to left it's a little different than what we're used to left to right but it matches up with the guitar okay so right to left I'm on string number two and I'm in fret number one so I want to put my index finger at the first fret of string number two so string two and then first fret then I'm looking for where my middle finger goes and it's on one two three four the fourth string second fret so I would go ahead and put my middle finger on the fourth string second fret then I say where's my ring finger or my third finger go we're sitting up here on the fifth line or the you can count down six five or count from right to left one two three four five so we're on the fifth string at the third fret so I've got one two three and then I say okay where's my pinky go it's at the third fret of the third string so I could put that on and then I see that I strum the top string open but don't strum, strum the sixth string and I've got my C7 chord and it works just like that now one other thing to mention with tablature diagrams, sometimes they go beyond open position, meaning the open strings plus the first three or four frets. When that happens, sometimes what we'll see is, or I should say every time that happens, what we'll see is a, a number out here telling us what fret this first space is going to be. So third is written here. So that tells me this is fret 3 and then 4, 5, 6, and so on. If it said 5 here, then we'd go 5, 6, 7. If it said 8, 8, 9, 10, it just continues on from whatever fret is marked there at that lowest fret spot. That tells us what fret we're going to start at. So in the case of this one, it's actually creating a bar chord. So I've got my index finger playing everything that happens in that third fret. The middle is playing then, then fret 4 on the third string. My ring finger is playing fret 5 on the fifth string and my pinky playing fret 5 on, this, on the fourth string. And I get a G chord at the, barring at the third fret. Okay, so that helps with tablature diagrams. I hope, hope you're having fun playing the guitar. It's awesome. Check out our method book series and our online uh, lessons, our video lessons, the series that'll help you out if you want to learn more about the guitar. Keep having fun and take care. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.